Green Stuff World Dipping Inks. Dipping Inks. Dipping Inks by Green Stuff World. Are they really the cheapest option? And are they worth picking up? Well, let's find out. Over the past few weeks, I've been testing them out on my Saurian Starhost army. And in this video, I'm going to try and lay out the pros and cons for these inks. In an unbiased way, of course. At the time of making this video, Green Stuff World has 36 different colors available for this line. These inks come in huge 60 milliliter dropper bottles. You can buy them individually or in sets of six. I'm a sucker for paint sets, so I decided to pick up three of these six packs. I picked up set four, which has three flesh tones, burgundy, and two reds. Set five, which has two browns, a green, a black, and two grays. And set six, which has uh, six different hues of purple. Sets four and five are what I would consider generic colors. I think if you're planning on picking these inks up, you'll want to get at least one of these sets, if not both. Just my opinion. I think they're the most useful of all the sets. Most of the sets focus on a narrow color palette, blues, greens, and purples. I actually really like the way these are organized. I haven't seen a lot of companies organize ink sets by hue like this. Now for the pros and cons. We'll start with the obvious one. You do get a lot of ink for the price. Like I said, they come in 60 milliliter dropper bottles compared to say Army Painter Speed Paints, which come in 18 milliliter bottles. And at face value, they are a lot cheaper by volume. You can layer them without having to worry about reactivation and they dry pretty quick, usually in less than a minute. I found you can layer some of the lighter colors over the darker ones which isn't something you can always do with inks. And I think that's a useful feature. For example, I layered some of the nude skin color on the belly of this croc to add a more fleshy tone over the darker uh, burgundy color that I put on it. You can thin down these inks with water, so no need to buy any special thinning medium. I used watered down deep black as a black wash on these models, and that seemed to work pretty well. One of the first things I noticed was that uh, in a lot of cases, the colors don't match the box art, like at all. So I'd suggest double checking online if you want a specific color, because there are a lot of test palettes out there. I bought the purple set because I really liked the colors, and it was the number one choice in the poll that I did, of course. And none of the colors in that set are really even close to the box art or the chart that they have on their website. Same goes for the skin tones and the reds. Another thing to consider is that uh, you are getting fewer colors compared to some of the larger sets by competitors. Are you really going to need 60 milliliters of, say, marrow purple? Just something to think about. At the moment, you can only buy these directly from Green Stuff World, which is located in Spain, so you might have to pay a significant amount of money for shipping depending on where you live. If I had bought all six sets, shipping would have added $75 to my order, putting the total over $200. And that's mainly why I only bought half the line. I paid about $100 for three sets, and that includes shipping, which is still cheaper by volume than most of their competitors, by the way. I did the maths. Like I mentioned earlier, they dry pretty quickly, so you don't get a whole lot of work time, which could be a con for some situations, but uh, it wasn't really an issue most of the time for me. Occasionally, if you don't get a coat down fast enough, it can cause issues though. Like here on this wing, when I was putting the black wash on, it kind of got a little messed up. Another issue that I have is a lot of the colors in these sets are just watered down versions of another color. For example, the red cloak color is pretty much a watered down version of red opulence, as far as I can tell anyway. Maybe the hue isn't exactly the same, but it's uh, pretty close. I also noticed that with some of the inks, you will get a super vibrant pool of color in some of the recessed areas sometimes. I don't know if I wasn't shaking them up enough or what, but uh, I did have that happen occasionally with certain colors. If you catch these spots early, you can wick them away with a dry brush, but if you don't catch them and they dry, it can look pretty bad. Aside from that, they separate pretty well, like you would expect a speed paint to separate. I think you can kind of break these down into two different categories. There's the dipping inks that are more meant to be glazes, and then there are dipping inks that are more meant to be a base coat. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes here. I want to talk a bit about how I actually ended up using these inks and the experience that I had with them. Personally, I hate color testing on tiles. I'd much rather just jump right into painting a model and if I have to repaint something, then that's okay with me. So I dry brushed a Zenithal Prime on my Saurians and I started testing these inks out. This isn't meant to be a tutorial on how to paint these models, but if you are interested in me doing a tutorial on how to paint these, let me know in the comments below. 
I was really excited to use this set of purples as the main color for this army. I love the look of them on the box art and online, but uh, like I said, once I started applying them, it was pretty apparent that the colors were not accurate at all. And like I mentioned with the reds, a few of these inks just seem like watered down versions of another ink. So I did my best to make it work. I just didn't lean as heavily into those purples as I was originally planning to. And I ended up using a few Army Painter speed paints to make the uh, color scheme work because of uh, the limited amount of colors that I had. I found that the flesh tones work really well by themselves or as undercoats. I ended up really liking the goth skin in particular. That's probably my favorite color overall. I used that as a base coat over the Zenithal for the skin and scales on the Warriors and Guardians. And I layered a couple different colors over that on the scales. In particular, I used a uh, fire giant orange and a few shades of purple. And then I also put a little bit of silver on top of that. I mostly used AP speed paints and metallic paint for the armor, but I did use deep black for some portions of the armor. I used the nude skin color as a base coat for the gators and chameleons and layered the colors in a similar way on top of that. I couldn't decide on one color scheme for the gators, so I decided to just do three. I was able to make a color similar to the glorious magenta on the box art by mixing a one-to-one -one ratio of red opulence and glorious magenta. I used that for some of the spikes and weapons. For the geckos, I just layered red opulence until it was a solid color, which only took uh, two coats. And then again, just used metallics for the armor. And I used watered down deep black as a final wash on everything. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how these inks perform. I might pick the rest of the colors up at some point, but I'm not really in a rush to do that right now. I think they still provide a pretty good value, as long as you're aware that some of them are more meant to be used kind of like glazes, and some of them are um, more like more of a flat color, I guess, and they don't really have much uh, separation to them. The majority of them separate pretty well, though. For the bases, I wet blended Elfwood Brown, Skeleton Brown, Greenstone, Gray Mist for some of the stones, and Deep Black. Those colors are all from the number five set, and they work pretty well together for like a forest terrain look, but they aren't really that saturated. So I ended up building the color up with some green paint and a mossy mixture that I made. So hopefully this video helps you out if you're considering picking some of these up. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I try to respond to all the comments, but uh, it is getting to the point where it's kind of hard to do that all the time. If you want to support the channel, there are a few links below, check them out. I just recently set up a tools and materials page on my website that has some links to some of the products that I use. And I do get affiliate income from those sales at no extra cost to you. So if you're looking to buy some art materials, that's one way you can support the channel. I'd like to thank you for watching my video. I hope you have a good day and I will see you later.